beginning of all this, uh, Rosalind had a rudder. It was a very young rudder that was built by Julian Griffiths, uh, Richard Griffiths' son, and it was not um, it was not what I needed uh, to move forward with. For one thing, it had a very large uh, propeller aperture for a uh, centerboard propeller shaft, um, which I will not have. I'm having an off-center shaft. Uh, so the, the area, the proportion, all that was like close, but not right, you know. Um, uh, and there were a few other things about it that weren't quite right for what I'm doing. Um, so I'm trying to extrapolate what Rosalind's rudder perhaps ought to be. Um, one of my main sources for that is the works of uh, Edgar March and um, survey work that was done by a gentleman by the name of Philip Oak in the 1930s. So um, particularly there's a book by Edgar March um, called Sailing Drifters and uh, a book called The Chatham Directory of Inshore Craft uh, which has a lot of illustrations by Oak. Um, and one of the ones that's recorded is a boat by the name of Ebenezer, which was also built by William Painter, just like Rosalind was, uh, 34 years prior in 1869. Uh, and she was also a somewhat bigger boat. She was nearly 10 feet longer, but also a mackerel boat. And what I found by taking lines drawings and construction drawings that there are and taking measurements off of the original hull of Rosalind uh, and turning that into a drawing and actually overlaying them is that all the angles are the same, almost all the proportions are the same. Um, so I feel fairly confident scaling down Ebenezer's rudder from the drawings and applying it to this because everything lines up. If it didn't line up, I would not feel comfortable doing that because as you extend the length of a boat, the proportions of a lot of things tend to change. Um, your displacement to waterline length ratio changes. Your All sorts of ratios change uh, just because of the way that things that are buoyant behave differently as they increase in size. Um, but given how well everything has lined up, this is, I think, what I'm going with. And this is what it looks like. Um, I took uh, a series of measurements off of the drawing um, and with reference points vertically along the straight line of the stern post and uh, I've laid them out and made a line with a batten and this is, this is what it looks like. So um, that's kind of what I'm going with. And you'll notice this is plywood. Um, what I'm planning to do is to laminate this rudder out of many pieces of plywood and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, one is that a rudder is a notoriously difficult uh, thing to keep happy because half of it's in the water and half of it isn't, uh, which for solid wood construction can be an issue over time. Not straight away, um, but over time that becomes an issue. Uh, Laminating with plywood and fiberglass is is incredibly, incredibly strong um, in all directions, not just vertically. Um, which, you know, solid wood construction, it's it's mostly strong in this direction. You're depending on the accuracy of your through bolting along the um, the plane of the rudder, which is with thinner rudders, which this is, is not. It's not by no means impossible, it's just, it's difficult. It's difficult to get your bolt to go right down the middle of this thing. Um, and I have a bit of excess plywood from the deck. Uh, and I'm also a level of like, a little bit uncertain about this. And if it's uh, plywood and fiberglass construction, I have more of an ability a little bit down the line to change the shape of this than I perhaps do with solid construction, which would mean entirely new bolts, entirely new, you know, 
you you're basically starting from from hardware at that point um, so that is some of my thinking anyway on this uh, the rudder that's described with Ebenezer uh, in this part of this graphic survey that was done by Philip Oak in the 1930s that Edgar March picked up on and ended up in a lot of these books um, it does actually specify and you can kind of tell that the rudder that is described was intended for use with power with engines um, not on a center shaft though so it's good because you know I'm going to be powered I need I need an engine so um, it's not like it's probably not representative of the rudder that Rosalind would have originally had when she was named Susan and she was built in 1903. Uh, she probably would have had a rudder with even less surface area that would have had slightly different dis distribution of surface area as well um, because you wouldn't have been worried about steerage under power um, which does change things a little bit. Uh, I only know a very little bit about that. but. Um... <laughs> With the rudder uh, nearing completion, it was time to see about the hardware, the pintles and the gudgeons that it will need to mount to the boat, um, which is uh, is not actually that complicated a process. Um, so this is one of the castings. Um, essentially, you you just make a pattern like a three-dimensional pattern um, based on. You know, I had to route this out to how 
uh, how much I wanted it to be inset for it to be flush. Um, but once you have that, you really, you just make a pattern to fit um, like, like so. Um, and then, and then take it to a foundry, um, which fortunately there is a very, very good foundry, the uh, Mystic River Foundry, literally right over there. I could, if it weren't cold, I could swim there, to be honest, but it's cold. So, um, yeah, uh, these are very basic. It's three bits of plywood and just a lump of wood to make up the body. You will note that the holes uh, are not in these for the pintles to go in, and likewise, the pintle ones do not have the pins, and that is because it's difficult to get a good casting of something like that for it to be, you know, perfectly in line and for a hole to be good. So what they recommended was to cast these and then take them to a machinist, which there's a local machinist, Brian Watrous, that they recommended, who I'll be going to at some point. Um, he will bore through these castings and uh, even bore through the pintle ones and then install uh, pins, I imagine, he will weld them in. Um, I'm not entirely sure what his capabilities are. I have not seen him yet, but um, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, that really, really fine work, I thought, given, I mean, these are pretty rough and ready patterns. I, I did not, I did not spend a lot of time fussing over making these 100% perfect. Um, she's a fishing boat. Going to bronze is a big upgrade um, to start off with. Um, and, you know, I'll put, I'll, I'll grind these up a little bit just to get the sand, um, the casting sand surface off of them. But that's really all it needs. Um, it's going to end up green and underwater, and the fish won't care. So, and just for reference, this is uh, this is the best preserved one of what came with the boat. So it's, I think, steel. See the 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 pin was welded in. Um, I don't know if you can see the weld there. Same same procedure. They will have bored it out and and uh, you know done it that way. Um, but uh, I've so far, and it looks like I'll manage to keep that up, managed to ensure that there are no ferrous metals below the waterline on this boat whatsoever. It's all bronze um, and lead, of course, with the ballast. But um, yeah, so I feel, feel pretty good about that. Um, I think the new ones will, will weather a bit better than this. Um, now, the one other thing is this being this being a restoration of a very old and very character-filled boat, uh, so to speak, um, one cannot assume that you just bore the hole in the middle and put the pin in the middle and that it will all line up perfectly. Um, you know, I, I installed every piece one at a time to the original boat, which um, had significant centerline twist in her, which I removed most of. Um, but I didn't want to push my luck and break anything. Um, so there was still a little bit of centerline twist in. So, um, and this procedure is not super complicated either. Um, I installed the pintle blanks onto the rudder itself, uh, and held them there with clamps, uh, so they didn't move about, uh, not being bolted yet. Put these onto the stern post. Um, and then actually hoisted the rudder up and and sat the pieces together like this, made sure that it looked, you know, visually looked in line. And then I've all I've done is um is marked where the corresponding pintle uh comes to so that I can I can locate the middle of this this radius for the holes and the pins, and that way they really should all all line up, um, despite there being a little bit of character to this whole situation. Um, yeah, more on that to come. Testing the acoustics of the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.